As a local person, I can tell you this, bu this building is left over from when we had to give up our park for the railway to be built underground for the 2000 Olympics. And Marrickville Council then decided to keep one thing available, and it was the shed. Out of that came Bromlin getting the contract to do this. And it, I think it was a godsend to us that an Aboriginal got the contract because the Aboriginal Consultative Committee for Marrickville was already set up and she was a community thinking person and she worked completely with the Consultative Committee. When Bromlin was doing this artwork, I'd be down of a daytime while she was here with the painters. You don't get the real value of it until you're in a plane going across the top. If you look around, you won't see one bit of graffiti. The local people and the visitors to the area are very proud of that shed. I'm involved with the MAC on two counts. So I have an interest in the arts and local community, especially the children. It's all rolled into one for me. About 70% of these young people are Aboriginal and um, their parents think that it's increased their confidence. The Marrickville Staff's Breakfast Program was created to encourage young people to get an education, to have a healthy breakfast and to encourage healthy lifestyles by being trained by their role models of the under 20s Rabbitohs team. I'm glad the kids actually get up at like six o'clock to do it because not many kids will get out of bed at that time. At the start of the year, I was we're trying to do something, they'd be like, nah, I don't want to. But now that they've got to know us and they're actually looking really fit now. Their parents, they have said to us that it helps them get to school in the morning and it gives them energy and they've loved meeting new people. It like opens your eyes to see that it's just like not just you alone, that there's other Aboriginal kids that you can relate to. Mac, Mac, Big Mac. I was asked to go to a meeting in the early 90s and, and turned up and um, that was when they were having the MAC meeting. I think Ann Weldon and a couple of others were there, Danny Packer and, and Jenny Thompson. And we found that the, there were a lot of uh, Aboriginal people moving into the area after a couple of meetings. It just carried on from there. Out, out of MAC came IWAC. The pity is that IWAC had folded up. In my time on MAC, we got the midden established and were able to discover that there were a lot of Aboriginal sites in the area. A lot of rock carvings and cave paintings and a lot of those, lot of those sites have been, are in private properties now. And one of the things that MAC had done is brought those to the attention of the council. When you take a beautiful walk from Bronwyn Shed all the way along the Cooks River, you will notice different interpretive signage on the way. Before the MAC was actually established, Aboriginal people and the Torres Strait Islander residents of this area as well were invisible. That's why I keep coming back to the MAC because it has brought Aboriginal people to the forefront of this community and that we are seen as active in the community and part of the community. I'm very proud to say that Council has kept our beautiful midden. The midden has been dated as four and a half thousand years old, so now it's protected. Nobody really knows where it is now and it'll be there for future generations to come. And over there is the interpretive story poles. The young people in the area have decorated 
with the leadership of Brendan Kieran, and this is our way of acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And we're here yesterday, we were here, today we're here, and you bet we'll be here tomorrow. I was a member of the Marrickville Aboriginal Consultative Committee um, and on that committee we came up with a, a program which involved these totem poles. The story behind the totem poles was we picked four um, schools in the local area. The kids came up with their own designs. So in total there's 12 and they're spread out all the way along the Cooks River. A, a lot of Koori kids are sort of born in this area, in the Sydney area, and have not really have connection to, to homeland. The idea with the totem poles is to give those Koori kids a connection to something that's in their backyard. So these totem poles are going to be here for hundreds of years and those kids will come down here when they get older hopefully with their kids and then with their kids' kids and they've got something they can say that you know we painted these and have a little bit of respect about the area. We, we got kids from other cultural backgrounds to participate in the in the program as well because my backyard is your backyard. That's what um, these totem poles are standing for and, and telling the story about a community. Oh, 20 years, my goodness. Well, I, I don't know, I can't remember exactly where I was 20 years ago. I think I was roaming around Alexandria, looking for a place to stay. Um, staying with family members, yeah, about 20 years ago. I was working and I finally got an offer to come to Marrickville. And I've never been so content. The people who were involved with Mac at the time who come over to my place and invited me to be part of that. And it's, it's made me feel proud of, of me. Being involved with, the, with the, the MAC has given me some sen sense of um, self-respect and uh, that I am a person, that I can contribute, uh, I can take part in community issues. And I have Mac to thank for that. And uh, I, I wish him all of success in the world and hopefully another 20 years. Turn your mind back. 350 years. In your mind, look around this part here. Can you see any buildings? Can you see roads? Can you see houses? Can you see cars? Do you hear planes? The light rail? What do you reckon is here? Bush. Bush. Sophie was talking about a creek. There's a creek that used to run right through your school before this was even a school and went down to the Cooks River. I nominated to be on the MAC this year for the very first time ever and um, it was a big step for me uh, because I thought well now I'm getting serious about thinking and feeling about who I am and how I relate to this place. I'm at a time now where I'm comfortable to understand that I live on Gadigal country, it belongs to someone else, I belong to another place but um, I can express those things and the beauty of all those things um, by being on MAC. Happy birthday, Mac! Happy birthday, Mac! Happy 20th birthday, Mac! <laughs> Happy birthday, Mac! <laughs> Happy birthday, Mac! <laughs> Happy birthday, Mac! <laughs> Happy birthday, Mac!
Happy birthday, Mac! Happy birthday!